CataractCoach.com, Piggy Bank IOL with a small surgical peripheral iridotomy. Now, this IOL is very difficult to exchange, so we're going to do a piggyback instead. Here's the original surgery done elsewhere by a different surgeon. You can see a very odd-looking irregular capsular axis, a lot of capsular bag fibrosis there. When I tried to dissect that lens out, it was just stuck, and I didn't want to cause damage to the capsular bag or zonular support, so we're just going to do a piggyback lens here. Now, this patient has an IOL power that's insufficiently low, for this particular case, we're putting in a three-piece silicone lens. So in the bag is a single-piece acrylic toric monofocal lens. And here in the sulcus, we're placing a three-piece silicone IOL. Now, this silicone IOL has a six-millimeter optic. We're going to place it entirely in the sulcus. And you can see this angul angulation there between the haptic and the optic is about five or ten degrees there. That helps keep the optic pushed backwards and also keeps it away from the posterior surface of the iris. So we're rotating the lens around here. I want to get both those haptics nicely placed in the sulcus, get this lens centered up. This lens here is a Bauchelam LI61AO. Now I'm just using the chopper there to, get, to keep the lens centered, and we'll try bringing down the iris. Now, you want to make sure that you're not having the haptic push up against the underside of the iris. So what you can do is go in here with these capsurexis forceps, nothing special. Grab the iris gently, 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 and pull a little bit just to make sure the haptics aren't causing uh, any gripping or holding of the back of the iris there. And we can do this 360. This also will, it will irritate the iris and it cause it to become myotic, which is what we actually want. So we'll bring down the pupil here, and you can see it's beautifully centered, nicely positioned. Now, do you need a peripheral iridotomy? You probably don't. And I'd say that because, you remember this lens is posteriorly angulated, there's plenty of flow around it, but do you want to put one in just to be sure, just to be safe? Now, if you are going to put a PI in, you don't want to make a huge one. So here's a way we can make a small one going inside of the Sinsky hook, upside down on the back surface there of the iris. And now using the chopper in the other hand, so no special instruments here, just to have that Sinsky hook poke through. There it is. There's the edge of it, the tip of it. And once that pokes through there, we'll just pull the iris on either side of it just to make sure we've got a hole pulled through. Now, this hole will be sufficient, and it's just a backup hole, just in case. But again, I don't even think it's necessary, and most people who do piggyback lenses say they don't even do it. But if you want to do one, there's an easy way of doing it. And there we can see the Sinsky hook is definitely through the iris, so that worked well. Could it close up? Maybe a little bit, but again, you don't need much flow through it anyway. And again, it's probably not entirely necessary. So here at the end, let's remove the viscoelastic. And so remember our mathematics here. What do we do for piggyback lens power? In general, especially for plus power, it's about 1.5 times the refraction from the spectacle plane. So if the patient needed a plus 2 of the spectacle plane, you'd end up putting in 1.5 times that or a 3 diopter piggyback lens here. And so there you go, looking pretty good. Hey, let me remind you about cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. You got to check it out. So much great stuff. There, the free PDF book, the curriculum series, our weekly podcast, amazing, growing so rapidly. You will love that podcast. Definitely come over and check it out. Let's get back to our case here. Viscoelastic has been removed. We're going to seal up the incision here, maybe put in some meiotic agents. And so once this incision is sealed up, notice with that lens, we tend to do a little bit of a larger incision, about 2.75 incision, 2.8 perhaps. And now going inside here, we can make sure that there's no retained viscoelastic. And we'll bring the pupil down there. So beautiful looking case here. Patient was very happy. Calculations were spot on target. Again, it's pretty easy to calculate for a routine eye. Again, it's a multiple of the refraction of the spectacle plane. I went back and recalculated the original lens calculation powers just to ensure. And of course, it obviously calculates out the same way. And so this patient was very, very happy. The opposite eye just did a routine cataract surgery. And again, keeping in mind the patient's refractive goal and desires. And the patient ended up with just about the same refractive outcome in both eyes. And the patient was very happy. So piggyback lens here. Again, remember our magic number here is about 1.5 times the refraction of the spectacle plane equals the piggyback eye power. And again, this is a piggyback lens with the three-piece silicone lens. And the haptics are angulated. So the optic sits a little bit further back than the uh, haptics do, and that keeps it nicely positioned and ensures you're not going to get scraping of the optic against the back of the iris. And this patient's done beautifully. And again, here's the myotic agent. Nice case. Keep this in mind. If you ever needed a piggyback lens, now you know. And again, remember, check out that podcast every week, a brand new podcast everywhere where you find your podcast. Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, and more.